John Lehman, it's great to see you again. Welcome to CFC. And uh, why don't we do introductions real quick? Lehman, will you want to start us off? Sure. So I'm Lehman. I created Hashgraph and started Hedera, and I'm just really excited to be here with you and with you. Absolutely. Tough Thanks. one to follow that. I'm John. Uh, I'm the CTO at the Algorand Foundation. Excellent. Well, uh, I know you gentlemen have been working on a partnership, and that's exciting to hear. That's one of the big benefits of CFC is the quality of the participants. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Maybe I'll start. So I think for our industry at large, uh, the Web3 space, the decentralized asset space, user experience has to be put at the forefront if it's going to be successful. Um, and one of the most frictionful points right now around the user experience for the average person who's venturing into digital assets is the key. The private key is required to spend those assets. It's essentially your right of ownership over those assets. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits of Web3 is that having this single key that you own gives a great responsibility of self-sovereignty. It's not with the bank, it's with you. And that's a wonderful virtue of the technologies that we uh, have created and we are working on. However, with that comes a huge responsibility. And uh, folks out there have lost these keys. And with that, they lose their assets. And so, um, with Swirls Labs, uh, Lehman and his team um, have come up with a wonderful protocol uh, for how we can ensure that these keys are kept secure in a decentralized manner. And if someone was to lose those keys, they can be recovered um, without uh, having to trust any one party. That's great. Yes. So <laughs> the whole future is things like blockchains and other things that are online, but you have keys, you have passwords. Maybe we'll go to pass keys, but then you have information in your phone that does the pass key. There's always some secret somewhere that you need to protect. And our whole lives are moving online and being controlled with these things. You don't want to give it to someone else, not your keys, not your crypto. Right. You want to have it yourself, <laughs> but then you lose it. And I get emails from someone saying, I've lost my 24 world mnemonic. Could you create another one for me? Uh, no. <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's bad because every part of our life has a safety net, but not this one. Right. If you lose your password to your bank, someday you'll get into your bank account. If you lose your key for a crypto account, you're out of luck. And so what you have to do is be able to share it with some friends and family, maybe your bankers, maybe your lawyers, but share it with multiple helpers and have your phone every day asking their device, do you still have my part of it? Mm. That's really important. And keep it secret. You don't want to know, you don't want the world to know how many helpers you have or who they are. This is important. But the most important thing is it's gotta be interoperable. Right. Every wallet, every password manager, this isn't just crypt, uh, you know, blockchain, every password manager needs to interoperate. So we've gotta have a standard that everyone uses and it has to be open source and everyone. And that's why I think it is so great that we have this partnership and we're bringing in others also, other blockchains, uh, banks and credit unions and other people. It's just so important to do that. Well, I'm really glad you guys are working on this. I mean, I've often said, if we're gonna get to a billion users in crypto in the next year or two, user interface is the key. Absolutely, yeah. What I was just gonna to add to what Lehman's already said is that one of the reasons the Algorand Foundation and the Algorand ecosystem at large are so excited to be uh, a founding a founding member of, the, of this alliance is because the way the team uh, under Lehman's leadership have built this thing mm -hmm. is true to the value proposition of crypto broadly. And so uh, it's built agnostic to any chain. It's not leveraging things that are Hedera specific or that are Algorand specific or Cardano specific. Um, it's using best in class cryptography because the engineers that are working on it are, are, are you know, the industry's best. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the execution of the protocol, the actual implementation, again, is true to the value proposition of what we're trying to do. And so it's great if, you know, a lot of protocols are put out there and they, they look great on the tin, but under the hood, there's some kind of concession where they are centralized in some kind of way. There's some person you trust, some entity you trust. The wonderful thing about this, uh, the, the, the decentralized recovery of keys, is that it's true to the thesis of crypto. You don't have to trust anyone. You can be sure that if you lose access to that valuable key material, that you can recover it. And um, all the while, we're making sure that it's as open a standard as possible, that other members from the broader industry can come in, influence, and hopefully adopt. And I think that that is the killer, the killer app. I think the fact that this thing is not 
you know, Hedera specific, Algorand specific, or any other chain, it's, it's, it's nonpartisan. And by that, we're hoping for the first time that we will see broad uptake across the industry. Previous attempts at this have been okay, but uh, the one thing that they failed at is that they always leveraged something that was brand specific. Well, I agree with that. And it is not using any blockchain. It can protect any secret. Your keys to any blockchain can protect, but there's no smart contract involved. There's no social recovery involved. There's nothing that involves a blockchain involved. And this is critically needed by the blockchain industry, but it's also critically needed outside the blockchain industry. This isn't just for protecting keys. It's also for protecting passwords. It's also protecting passkey information. Any secret you have, your secret recipe, you can have for your cookies, you can have protected by this system. Interesting. And it sounds like you're really positioning and building this alliance to be neutral, to be open, to be decentralized. I really love that you're keeping to that sort of key ethos. I know that so many people, uh, that's critically important to them. Um, what are you calling the alliance? It is the DREC alliance, decentralized recovery. So DeFi is decentralized finance. DREC is decentralized recovery. So it's the DREC alliance. And, uh, you know, Algren and, and Hedera are involved right now, but other blockchains will also be involved. Uh, and we are, we are recruiting others. And then we have lots of other people involved. We have wallets involved. We have um, people building apps for banks, people building apps for credit unions. Sure. So the building blocks and Bank Social are two that are building for them. We have wallets involved. And we want to get even broader people like password managers involved. That's great. It's, it's just great. I mean, I'm really excited about it because for the first time when I spoke to Lehman about this, I, I, there was nothing about it I, I didn't like. It was easy for us to jump into it because it's honestly great for the industry if a technology like this can be proliferated across all the different chains. Mm -hmm. And wonderfully, you know, um, I've spoken before uh, publicly about the fact that the crypto industry or the Web3 industry tends to be quite tribal, mm -hmm. a, a little bit like football clubs, you know, the, everyone's got their favorite. Um, but what's wonderful about this uh, and what's so important is that it really does um, implement a protocol which can be adopted by anyone without any favoritism. Got it. And so the important thing here is that it be interoperable. We have one standard. Right. It doesn't even matter what the standard is. And this will become an IETF standard. This is going to become real standards. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is that you have a wallet on one blockchain and I have a password manager and somebody else has the app that they use to access their bank. And each of us can be helpers to each other and sharing information with each other because it's interoperable. That's the important thing is that we have one standard, that it's open, that it's reviewed by everyone, that it becomes actual internet standards. This is the important thing. 10 competing standards where every wallet can't talk to each other is bad. Right, absolutely. Well, and so it sounds like you're structuring this to be really open and permissionless where people can adopt the standard mm -hmm. uh, directly. And so I take it this isn't like a foundation or formal membership. It's just you're creating this open infrastructure. Both. So we're creating the DREC Alliance okay. that people can join. But we're also creating, the lands itself is creating libraries that are free software to make it easy for you to add this to your app. The idea is you just have a, add a few lines of code to your app and now you have DREC. That's the idea. And so you don't have to join anything. You just download it from GitHub and go. Right. Or if you want to, you can join and you can help influence it. You can influence what the standard is. It is not owned by any one person. That's the goal. So I presume this has been open source then? All open source. Very much so. Yes. And, and we're going to have a technical committee. Uh, of which uh, the Algorand Foundation and of course uh, Swirls Labs and Hedera are, are founding, are founding uh, members mm -hmm. and uh, members will rotate over time and uh, other members will be elected. We, and we want uh, folks to, from across the industry, from across the chains, from across various entities that are interested in this to come and help. It, to, to be successful, it has to be open. Right. It has to be able to be something that is not controlled again by, by one entity or one company, one chain. Um, and so it is very much in the DNA uh, of, this, of this initiative to have others fr fr from across the industry influence and, um, and develop it. And these two ecosystems are just the first two members. Right. They're not special. <laughs> there will be many members that are all equal. There's nothing special about these two. Right. And our goal is to, be, is to not be special. That's our goal. Yeah. Well, I think that's very smart. You know, you look at the most successful internet standards and they're all neutral, they're all open. That's what gets the broadest adoption. Right. And if you look at TLS, the transport layer security that, that encrypts our traffic as we browse the websites, you know, different browsers implement it in different ways, sure. 
but there's a defined standard on what it means to be TLS compatible and what it means to be secure. Sure. And so, you know, even if folks choose not to use the reference implementation that, that's going to be provided, that's fine. Yeah. You, can t you can take the standard, implement it yourself, implement it in Rust, implement it in a different language that you prefer. Um, I couldn't be more excited to do this with you. Oh yeah, this is very exciting. It's a very simple standard for what bytes go over the internet. And we'll have libraries that you can use, or you can ignore them and just make the bytes go over the internet yourself. Write it all from scratch. It all works. And even at the protocol level, which defines, you know, as Lehman's already said, hey, I've got a key. Um, how do I make sure if I lose this key, I don't end up in trouble? Right. Answer, I distribute the uh, uh, shards of the key to my helpers, to the individuals who I trust in my, in my circle of friends and family. Um, and the protocol defines how we can check with those individuals, or indeed the computers um, that they run, uh, to make sure that they're, they're still alive and active and, and I, I can rely upon them if I ever need to recover my key. Um, but even that protocol itself, sure, we've started with what we think is a very strong implementation, but over time, just like SSH has evolved or other protocols on the internet have evolved, we may, we may add elements to that, rem remove elements, modify it. And so this stuff is not, uh, it's not stuck in time. It's going to evolve over time. But ultimately, always with an eye for staying decentralized, um, ensuring that we have best-in-class engineering and applied cryptography so that it's secure, and uh, I think doing so in a way that it is agnostic to any one party. Right. Exactly. So it's very simple protocols for how do I make you be my helper? How do I send you information? How do I recover the information? How do I check every day that you still have it? My phone does that automatically. All of that is the protocols. These will be tweaked over time. They will evolve over time, but they're very simple and straightforward. Um, it, I keep saying it's not rocket science. It's using very standard cryptography, very standard uh, concepts, but it's desperately needed. We yeah. need the safety net. Honestly, it's shocking it hasn't been done before. I think, I think they've tried it. I just think it's, well, for, for, in my, my assessment, I should speak for myself, is that anyone who's tried it before has done so in a way that is somehow biased towards something, whether it's a technology or a party or otherwise. Right. This implementation, Lehman, do you want to? Yeah, so there have been biases. Often you have to use a, a smart contract on a blockchain or something. Also, often the world can see who your helpers are. Mm. Also, I don't think anyone has done this where you're checking every day. Right. Honestly, if you give this to your friends and family and you never check, I guarantee you one by one they're going to lose it. You'll never know it until you need it, and then it's too late. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm impressed that it's dynamic yes. and not static, right? right? I've helped with a lot of key ceremonies over the decade with different protocols, and usually it's a static key instead of here's a dynamic solution. Right, and um, this is key, pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> because social recovery has existed for a while, right? Sure, you can use Shamir secret sharing and shard up a key, whatever. You can give it to people, but ultimately, every single time I've seen this try to be uh, relied upon, uh, it comes to the point of recovery and you're a person short or someone's machine has died because they suffer from the same fate you did, which is why you need them in the first place. And so uh, this and ensuring that things are still hot, things are still there and are, are still dependable, it makes the protocol robust and uh, fit for purpose. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time today to go through this. I mean, I think this is an incredible outcome from an event like CFC to see the industry coming together, building new technology that will ultimately advance all of the ecosystem. So thank you guys for that contribution. And thank mm -hmm. you, Lehman, for having us on board. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys.